a state of emergency declared. Military on the ground. Displacement of regional communities and calls for national reviews into land management across the country. The Agenda 2030 plan has begun in Australia. G'day everyone, Ethan Nash from TOTTnews.com here, and there doesn't seem to be a peak to the ongoing bushfire saga in Australia. And in this report, we are going to take a look at what has been happening on the ground beyond the spin and deception of mainstream propaganda. On December 5th, 2019, we published the very popular piece, Australian Bushfires, a Smart City Conspiracy, which detailed inconsistencies with the official establishment narrative, whilst also making the link between geoengineering, Clara's high-speed train line, and the bushfire path. In this piece, we provided details of land already acquired for development in fire-affected regions, a brief history of documented geoengineering in Australia, and direct correlations between the fire paths. As we have been publishing about on the website, Smart cities are a direct initiative of the Australian government being introduced right across the country, and the plans are directly linked to the Agenda 2030 initiative by the United Nations to which our country signed in 2015. Since releasing this piece, which mainly focused on the cause and immediate effect of the fire spreading, Many new developments have been revealed on the ground of affected areas that indeed signify the international plan is underway in Australia. Defined, devised and driven by countries as the most intensive international multi-stakeholder consultation in history, UN Agenda 2030 is set to become the main reference for development policies and programs at a national level and in the push for a world government. We, the heads of state and government and high representatives, meeting at the United Nations headquarters in New York from 25 to 27 September 2015, have decided today on new global sustainable development goals. On behalf of the peoples we serve, we have adopted a historic decision on a comprehensive, far-reaching and people-centred set of universal and transformative goals and targets. We commit ourselves to working tirelessly for the full implementation of this agenda by 2030. The Agenda 2030 plan calls for a sustainable model that introduces further measures of control of all facets of life under the guise of preventing so-called unpreventable climate conditions in the future. As we have explored, over the 2018 to 19 summer, Australia was further pushed by geoengineering programs to the brink of water scarcity while continuing to restrict land burning practices, selling off private water assets and further cuts to the resources needed to prevent a national tragedy. The conditions were set and here we are just 12 months later folks with Australia on fire. Interestingly, just months before the bushfires began to spread, in October of 2019, the United Nations called for an overhaul of the world trade system to help achieve this target. This followed a historic United Nations climate summit in which the map was laid out for achievement of the plans. 
chemtrail and aerosol spraying, as well as fire twisters and other strange weather patterns have been seen, some of which we reference in the original piece, all increasing since the start of the fires. Let's not forget highly flammable chemicals and substances such as aluminium and barium have been sprayed across our skies and upper atmospheres as a means of preventing heat on the planet. As part of the United Nations Paris Agreement, weather modification tactics are discussed about being employed to bring about a new green economic order. However, weather is not the only element involved in this plan, and we have already begun to see further representations of the Agenda 2030 plan unfold before our eyes during the fire crisis. As Australia continues to burn, just as expected, the sprouting seeds have emerged in what many always envisioned the Agenda 2030 plan to look like ever since it was announced. Not only are millions of hectares burning in locations that will be used to develop a high-speed rail line and eight new advanced smart cities, but some of the activities and word we have received on the ground paint a shocking picture of what the future may look like under this plan. While fires progressed down the east coast of Australia, a state of emergency was declared across New South Wales by the Premier shortly after. Presented as a humanitarian measure that would ensure vital resources are deployed to assist the victims, many remained blissfully unaware of what some of the true measures included when this announcement was made. Under a state of emergency, the Premier warned citizens of New South Wales that they will be subjected to forcible removal off their property and land, while authorities on the ground warned locals in many regions they would be subjected to forced evacuations if required. Since this announcement, the tide has quickly turned. The Australian Defence Force was deployed across the country without the knowledge of the New South Wales Fire Chief or communication on the matter. Many residents in fire-affected areas have since described violations of their freedoms by being forcibly ejected from their land and properties under the guise of safety and security. We have also seen many communities and regions take a devastating hit on their water and food resources, leading to declines in vital necessities. This includes highways being blocked, infrastructure collapsing, scarcity of resources, isolation without rescue, and much more. Let's not forget, both the United Nations and World Bank have estimated that by 2025, 1.8 billion people will be living in countries with absolute water scarcity, and two-thirds of the world's population will be under water stress. As an era of uncertainty regarding water supplies approaches, Public reports on foreign investments reveal that over 10% of entitlements in Australia are currently owned by foreigners, with China and the US at the top. In Queensland, for example, Tambourine Mountain has run out of water supplies during the bushfire crisis. Meanwhile, Coca-Cola and their water miners still harvest millions of litres privately during the crisis. Furthermore, many are experiencing power generation problems across the country as residents are urged to cut back on their energy consumption and regions go without power. 
third world conditions, forced evictions and depleting resources all unfolding before our eyes. And it isn't just humans that are being affected. We have all heard about the so-called estimates of wildlife extinction during the fires. Interestingly, and what not many people are discussing, is the effect on livestock industry. Australian industries have already been destroyed or exploited by the Lima Declaration, and now we are further seeing the destruction of our agriculture and farming. Firefighters have come forward to speak of the unprecedented conditions, noting it defies years of their understanding of fire pattern behaviours. Many have placed the blame on the government, especially since donation money is not reaching the services required. This has also been noted by state authorities, who have set up a new task force to investigate the cause of the fires, given the rapid acceleration and velocity of the spread itself. Not to mention the arsonist link by many unknown agents of this unfolding plan. Many service stations and shops that are open are only accepting cash payments for goods and services, which has left many caught in a cashless, digital world stranded without support. ATMs and telecommunications towers are down, while cashless welfare recipients are left stranded. Interesting when you consider Australia's ongoing shift to a cashless society and recent continued pushes to pass legislation banning cash transactions over $10,000. To understand where the consolidation of all these resources will lead and some of the problems associated with the destruction of our natural resources, check out our Facebook video on the control of water and energy under the Agenda 2030 plan. As the story continues to unfold, we must also focus on the future of this plan as well. Are we seeing yet again a perfect execution of the Hegelian dialectic on an increasingly deceived public? For many years, the climate change lobby have continued to be fooled by a concerted effort to disrupt the natural environment and blame it on human beings in a push for sustainability. The sustainable measures, however, will be nothing short of economic and resource austerity. In relation to the fires this year, even the Volunteer Firefighters Association of New South Wales have called out establishment propaganda that implies that climate change is responsible. Despite these points, the masses continue to be fooled by the global warming narrative, as it plays right into the hands of bodies like the UN when offering sustainable solutions to save the planet. Create the problem, garner the reaction, and present the solution. The same old tricks at play. The next element to be examined is the cost and future plans that will eventuate after the fires have finally come under control. Ross Garnot and other experts predict the costs of the cleanup will be upwards of $20 billion dollars with the head of the new National Bushfire Recovery Agency stressing the significance of the task. Despite this gloom and doom programming, when examining the Smart City agenda, many would be shocked to learn that the government is actually benefiting on their route to sustainability. Indeed, if for some reason the fires weren't orchestrated, they are a godsend to the establishment. The proposed train line and accompanying smart cities were estimated to cost between 75 to 100 billion dollars before the fires started, 
making it the largest infrastructure project in Australian history. $20 billion in damage, or $100 billion the right way. Yes, authorities are actually saving money in pursuit of the Agenda 2030 sustainability model. Now that the land has been incinerated away, another announcement has sprung up that a national review of land management will be undertaken, which is predicted to include further control mechanisms enforced on national parks and private land ownership. The mainstream media have already begun pushing feature pieces on the tough road ahead for Australians, which includes, quote, rethinking the way we live in a new era of sustainability. Let's not forget that Australia contributes billions of dollars in foreign aid each year, but instead of using the money to effectively prevent this from happening, the blame will instead be placed on everyday Australians who will face the burden of a weakening standard of living in future years. However, Australians are beginning to wake up to this ongoing plan, and the establishment is going into damage control over the discovery and spread of these ideas. In the last week, the bushfires have reached international appeal, garnering the support of many celebrities, organisations and charities across the world. From Facebook to television, Instagram and Snapchat, online communities are full of those wanting to get their piece of the pie on the attention. Through this explosion, Many blatant hoaxes have been published by many online personalities who seek to further progress climate change and a green agenda to the masses. This has resulted in fake maps that ironically seek to disguise or downplay the smart city train line route. We've also seen fake donations and charities scamming individuals and planted alternative conspiracies that focus on small aspects of the story, like backburning hazard reduction and green policies. For the real donations that have taken place, like the $40 million raised by Celeste Barber, when will they actually receive this money? The fires are happening now, not when the Facebook clock expires, folks. Are these just PR stunts? We know they will all claim the donations back on tax through philanthropist efforts. Is this another way to drain the tax pocket dry in the future? Furthermore, where will all of these donations go? Donations from the 2018 drought disappeared and many farmers did not see a cent from campaigns launched by the Today Show and other outlets. Let's not forget about the arsonist conspiracy dominating the airwaves. If there is real arsonists, it is the terrorists using geoengineering tactics to first cause severe drought at the turn of 2018, 19 and prior, and then prevent rainfall heading into this year's bushfire season. The lack of backburning and green agenda in places such as councils and state governments are only part of the problem. They knew Australia would burn, prevented and manipulated the conditions, cut resources and instigated a drought before further intensifying the flames with the same geoengineering tactics. But their game seems to finally be coming to an end in the age of information, and thanks to your support in spreading the word. But we must act quickly. In recent weeks, theories expressed in our first feature piece have been widely spread online and have forced the mainstream media to publish many hit pieces attempting to discredit the information. Outlets from Murdoch-owned news.com.au, 
to The Guardian, BuzzFeed and others have all taken to their platforms for a coordinated attempt to dominate Google searches on the topic and drive readers to their pages while attempting to discredit the theories while they're there. News.com.au even posted an article this week that forgot to crop out our website name out of the title, leading to an onslaught of trolls and spam bots hitting all of our channels in the last 48 hours. This has resulted in our articles being pushed down in Google results, going from 2nd to 7th on the list of bushfire conspiracy searches with their publishings. What are they so afraid of? Could it be that Australians are finally breaking free of the conditioning around them and starting to ask questions? In going for broke, many average Australians who once dismissed so-called conspiracy theories such as Agenda 2030 are now starting to take these ideas on board after witnessing the unusual nature of both the fires, the response and the defences put up. Their narrative is falling apart with each share or each discussion begun. Australians, the time to form together is now. In the age of connectivity, we must capitalise on the opportunities we have at our disposal to connect and share information with one another before increasing digital surveillance states creep further into our personal lives. I implore all of those interested to sign up to our website, which will in turn help you stay up to date with us and connect with like-minded Australians also interested in this information. The internet is a land of censorship and manipulative algorithms, and this is the best way to stay in touch with our work on this subject and other critical topics in Australia. Please consider subscribing to our channel for more and share this video with friends and family who might be interested in the information. And as always, stay tuned to tottnews.com for all of the latest in real news and information from Australia. Thank you to everyone for watching and you all take care of yourselves.